What is going on, everyone? I hope you're all doing well on this Sunday morning. At least it's Sunday morning here for me as I just woke up. It's not even 6 a.m. yet, but I could not wait any longer to share this leak with you guys after I saw it last night just as I was getting ready to go to bed. So this leak is pertaining to the RTX 2080 Ti, which has been benchmarked in 10 games compared to the GTX 1080 Ti. So this is going to be a huge leak, lots of games tested that many of you are going to be interested in. The Now there are some things I want to go over before we do jump into the numbers, but I don't want to waste too much time. The original source of this leak is a Turkish technology YouTuber by the name of PC Hokazi TV. I'll have a link to his channel down below, but the video has actually since been taken down. If you go over there right now, it just says that the video is unavailable. But taking a look at his channel, the guy's got 93,000 subscribers. It seems like he works with some companies who do send him tech, and it's a pretty professional-looking channel, and, you know, definitely um, seems legitimate, at least just based on, you know, the quality of his content and everything. It seems conceivable that he could have received a early sample on the RTX 20 series, even though we're not expected to see benchmarks going up until I believe it's the September 12th or the 13th. So far, I've heard that's around the embargo date. So that's when we should see numbers from pretty much all the other tech channels. But it looks like this guy posted up his video maybe a little bit early and then had to take it down or maybe Maybe he published it right away rather than scheduling it, and he took it down himself. But either way, someone took screen grabs of all of the screenshots, of uh, all the benchmarks. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at here. Now, as to his testing methodology and test system, since there's no video, we just really don't have a whole lot to go on. However, most of his builds that I looked at through his channel seem to be focusing on Ryzen, a lot of Ryzen 5 builds. Uh, most recently, he did a build with the Ryzen 5 2600X. I also saw a benchmarking video on the GTX 1070 Ti where he was using a Ryzen 1600, so he seems to kind of favor the Ryzen 5 platform, although that really shouldn't matter as far as bottlenecking in this particular testing, because all of his testing, for the at least for the screenshots that we have, were done at 4K ultra settings with the 1080 Ti versus the 2080 Ti. So the Ryzen 5 shouldn't get, a, get in the way of, you know, limiting it FPS-wise when testing at 4K. If he was testing at 1080p high settings, then there could be certain titles where maybe, uh, you know, the, the cards might get bottlenecked a bit, but at 4K ultra settings, the CPU really shouldn't be a limiting factor in that. Now, of course, just like with any leak or rumor, you should take this with a grain of salt, but hopefully we can discuss this down in the comments below on whether or not you believe these benchmarks or not. But as I said, the guy has got a lot of credibility. He's got a very professional-looking channel, 93,000 subs. It, he definitely could have received this card early for review. So we're going to go ahead and start going through some of these benchmarks now. And going through them, what I was able to notice is that the... Uh, percentage gained varied anywhere from 20 to 30 percent and even in some titles gaining about a 50 percent increase in performance on the $1,200 2080 Ti to the 1080 Ti which by the way you can get now for below $700 so after looking at these benchmarks I guess you'll have to determine whether or not it's worth it and that is of course in case if you do choose to go ahead and believe these benchmarks so the first score we'll take a look at is Rainbow Six Siege here, you can see it went from getting an average of 61.6 FPS up to 90.1. So that is a pretty big jump in performance there, going from the 1080 Ti to the 2080 Ti. But looking at the graph, as I mentioned here, there are a few things you can that we can at least learn about the testing. We can see that he was testing at 4K Ultra settings. It's a 2080 Ti Founders Edition versus a 1080 Ti Founders Edition, and we've got the maximum average and minimum FPS, but there's really nothing else that we can learn about this. We don't know if he used the in-game benchmark, if where he would test in the game if he didn't use the built-in benchmark. That kind of stuff we just really can't learn by looking at these graphs, but, you know, we can analyze it, as I said, and kind of go from there. So that's a pretty decent bump in performance between the two different generations. Going to the next game, we've got Call of Duty World War II, where he went from 50 FPS up to 61 Point one. I'm mostly going to be focusing on the average FPS here. If you want to, you know, pause and look at the other numbers, of course, you can go ahead and do that. But the minimums, you know, you can see something like this. Even at 4K, it's coming down below 60 FPS. The minimum on COD World War II was 46.2, even on the 2080 Ti. The next game up is Far Cry 5, which is a pretty darn intensive game playing at 4K. 1080 Ti went from 44.4 .4 
up to 68.9 on the new touring based graphics card. Next game up is the Crew 2 where we can see getting an average of 47.3 FPS on the Sandy Ti and then 58.3 on the 2080 Ti. After that we've got For Honor which managed to gain from 51.7 up to 78.3 and the 2080 Ti did bring up the minimum FPS at least over 60 FPS while on the 1080 Ti it was down at 42 0.6 frames per second on GTA 5 getting 78.2 which is very impressive for 4k at ultra settings in that game going from an average of 61 fps to giving yourself a fair amount of headroom they're getting 78.2 on the new card and the minimum is just under 60 fps but still having some drops below 60 mass effect andromeda that's a very intensive game to run even at 4k on a especially at 4k i should say um, definitely on the 1080 Ti, it struggles to do it. My 1080 Ti struggles to do it at just ultra wide, but this managed to go from 48.4 up to 67.3 average FPS. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. This is one of those games. It could have been tested anywhere on any map. Um, we just this. It looks like it's on the original map, which I don't know the name of because there's a, there's a little picture in the right hand corner, so that could be indicative of where he was testing. But we just don't know, unfortunately. But it went from 42.5 FPS up to 61.6, so at least getting an average over 60 frames per second. Although it definitely looks like there were frame drops down below 60, with the minimum at 47.3. The Witcher 3 here, also interesting, getting going from 44.1 up to 56.4, but still plenty of frame drops down below 60 frames per second, as it couldn't even maintain an average of 60 fps so all of you with dreams and, and, and hopes of uh picking up a twelve hundred dollar graphics card to play the witcher 3 at 4k 144 hertz on your brand new monitor uh keep dreaming at least if these rumors are to be believed and last up we have a battlefield 5 testing scenario which i thought was the most interesting of the bunch that he was testing on battlefield 5 this could have been from one of the recent closed betas or closed alphas but you should definitely take this these numbers with a particular grain of salt as this is definitely going to be early on uh, testing with unoptimized drivers for a game that is not actually even released yet and we don't know if he was using real-time ray tracing or not i would have to lean towards probably not using real-time ray tracing considering what we know so far about that how it can barely do 1080p 60 fps even in battlefield 5 but at 4k ultra with what i'm assuming is no ray tracing got an average of 75.2, which is pretty darn good, although some drops down below 60 there, and the 1080 Ti got 54.5 frames per second. So those are all the numbers that we have so far from PC Hokazi TV, but like I said, I just really wanted to share those with you guys so that we can discuss it down in the comments below, and you know, I'm not vouching for these numbers in any way whatsoever. I just wanted to present you guys with the evidence and the numbers that we have so far so that we can discuss it, but... You know, some of the reasons I would be led to believe this could possibly be legit is the size of the guy's channel, the quality of his content and everything like that. It just doesn't seem like he would, you know, it doesn't seem like the type of channel that would post up fake benchmarks just to get a few extra clicks here and there. It's not some like rinky dink channel. This guy clearly does YouTube all the time and he's trying to build a career and a life out of doing YouTube and has a passion for technology. So I really just think there was a mistake on his end with possible, I think he just published it without scheduling it and then took it down or posted it by accident, maybe not understanding the embargo date. And then Nvidia had to get in touch with him and say, hey, you need to take this video down right away. But the fact that the video is not even up anymore should probably tell us something is that he wasn't trying to just get people over there. Otherwise, why wouldn't he have just left the video up? So a lot of things to discuss, as I said, and uh, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below as always. If you enjoyed this video or found it informative in any way don't forget to leave a like on it down below subscribe if you're not already and ring that notification bell so you never miss a moment of content including all the news rumors leaks and everything concerning the new rtx series on the channel and i will catch you all tomorrow for another video it's all right.